uh, what we're supposed to be all about. For sure. Setting the tone, establishing our culture, uh, a lot of teaching. Uh, we had a conditioning test that everybody passed, so I was happy about that. But um, it really was just about having a great first day. <laughs> and then having that lead to a great day. Like I said yesterday, it's going to be a day-by-day -day thing for us, so day one. Is it, is it evident the work they put in? Oh, so, for sure. Very evident the work that they put in. I told them, I think four weeks ago, that we were going to have a conditioning test today, and they all passed the major. So, yeah, the work that they put in this summer, as far as the hair work that they did, and the three-man work that they did, you can definitely see it on the What is the test? What do they got to do? They have to, so three-quarter court. So I don't know if you can see there's a blue line mm -hmm. at the free throw line down there extended. It's 12 times. Is it unusual? Three, three times. So 12 times, minute and a half break, then do it again, minute and a half break, then do it again. Is it unusual that everyone passes on first day? Um, I wouldn't say unusual, but... What was the most important thing defensively for on day one? Just getting them to learn the concepts. We've been talking a lot about it, but it's different when you're actually on the court and able to kind of go through it. So our ball pressure, our help, and uh, our communication, those are the big three that, that we've been talking about today. Is there a great deal of difference in schemes? From last season, or is it just things that are being emphasized? Oh, there's a difference. There's a difference in scheme. We're helping more than we have before. So I'm not going to get too too far into it, but yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a big difference. Stephen, you spoke last season. Continue to go through this learning process with the players and stuff. They continue to develop. How much do you how much do you depend on and lean on Coach John Lucas throughout the process? So much. I, I lean on Luke for his help with the player development. I lean on Luke for the experience that he's had. He's someone that I talk to every day, multiple times a day. And uh, the relationships that he has with our guys, he can, he can make people do things that nobody else in the world can make them do. So he's so valued with me and I'm just happy for myself. When these guys were rookies last year, some of the guys like Jalen, yeah. uh, Alpi, you talked about they were picking up concepts a little bit quicker than you thought they were going to. How important is it going to be for you to lean on them to now teach the new guys coming in the concepts you want them to learn? Yeah, it's big. Experience is huge. And those guys, the fact that they have experience, yeah, they're able to point the younger guys in the right direction. But like I said, things are a little bit new, so everybody's learning right now. And uh, they're picking it up quickly. But it's day one. I'm not gonna like kind of overstate the the progress after after one day. Was Usman's experience in Eurobasket viable for you? Were you able to see things that you? I, I tell I can tell you already have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It, it was great. His screening, rolling, short rolling, and passing. Those are the three things that I thought he was pretty good at, but I didn't know he was as good at as he did during the uh, Euro basket. So uh, yeah, the energy that he has, those are things we knew. The switchability that he has, those are things we knew. But as far as his offensive game, he really showed a uh, knack for short rolling and making plays for others that I didn't know he had. Does that give you an opportunity to run some of the stuff that you run with Alpi? Then with the second unit, if he is the second unit center? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. It's more, it's less static and more on the move for him. Uh, with Alpi, it's a little bit more static getting him the ball, but with Us, you can be a little bit more on the move and he can catch it and make plays. Coach, can you talk about, uh, we've talked about your players getting adjusted to the first day, but what about your new assistant coaches? How are they getting adjusted? In? How much did them coaching and somebody help? starting today. Yeah, it helped a lot. It helps uh, the fact that I had relationships with most of them, and uh, they jumped in with both feet, and I feel really good about them. Uh, again, it's day one, and everybody's been trying to get to know each other, but the great thing is we've had most of our team in all summer, so those relationships started two months ago. And then you actually spoke to us yesterday. Alpha started. So I love it. That's what, that's what they should think. They shouldn't think any, anything else. So, yeah, I love that. Coach, off the court, you took an iconic picture with 
Texas head coach Lovey Smith and Thanks, Astros sir. manager Dusty Baker. What was that like for you just to be around them? And especially since that it's you know all three African American coaches coaching a professional sport at one time in the city of Houston. Yeah, it was uh, humbling for sure just to be in the photo with those two iconic guys. It meant a lot to have the, the city of Houston in the background and seeing the picture after it was taken, like it was cool being with them and talking to them. Dusty gave me a bottle of his wine, which was really good. But uh, just seeing the picture, like kind of made me emotional because yeah, like, we are the only city in the country that has two, three African-American head coaches. And that's what Houston's about. That's the uh, diversity and the soul and, and all the great things that Houston is, is kind of a, encapsulated in that picture. I'm just, Blessed to be one of the guys. Did your dad see it? He saw it. He thought it was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. He's committed to you. You think about what the tough part is going to be. Oh, I mean, from where he was two years ago this time to where he is now, he's one of our leaders on and off the floor. So he's comfortable for sure. He's put in a ton of work. Body right now, it looks amazing, and um, he's one that the younger guys look up to, but they also listen to because he's, he's just a leader. He's got a voice and he's got a knack for leading. So they're leading into that. You mentioned how he looks. Are there guys who uh, whose conditioning or whatever has changed it a great deal? Scoot's conditioning is out of this world. I mean, he killed the conditioning. It was great, and Jalen too. Great job in the conditioning test. KJ Martin did a very, very good job. So everybody's been working. And uh, it used to be this would be the first day you do the conditioning test and it'd be like, I hope nobody gets hurt. But for us, it was, everybody passes it because they, they've been putting the work. Have you seen the growth spurt from? Oh, go ahead, Kim. How was Eric in terms of the defensive leader speaking? Eric is great. Eric is always great. Um, he is, this is his 15th year in the NBA, and we need to lean into that, and his experience, and his ability. He shot 42 from three last year, so we, we need to find him, and he, he's been there. He's been to where we want to get to, so he's one of the leaders on this team, and he's been showing it with his play as well as his talk. Coach, we look at the roster, we've seen uh, some significant growth spurts from some of the some of your players. Could you tell the difference as well? As far as like actual growth spurts? Yes. Like, I didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did Jabari grow? Is that what we're saying? That's what they're saying. Really? Okay. You said about an inch. So, really? <laughs> I'll take another inch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Coach, um, Stacy, how important is it for these young players? What were some of the things you taught on day one? Yeah, so we're just trying to get them in the right spots. And at the Toyota Center, we have it taped on the floor. At the other gym, we have it taped on the floor exactly where they need to be because, like I said yesterday, we're trying to get the ball into the paint. But in order for us to be connected and playing together, we have to be in the right spots. So Jalen's trying to turn the corner, Scoot, Eric's trying to turn the corner. Everybody needs to be in the right spot. So we took the time, slowed it down. Mahmoud is really good at that. So been leaning into his experience with the Vipers as far as the spacing that they had and implementing a lot of that stuff with us. Stephen, it felt. Oh. Patience is something that I'm not very good at, but um, yeah, the, the, the patience that I had last year for these guys, for the guys, it's just different. Everybody's different. These, these kids that we have this year are, um, they have the luxury of leaning on the guys who went through it last year, right? So, um, I won't say that I will be less patient with them, <laughs> but I think they can earn their way to uh, more responsibility. Steven, it felt like one of the Oh, it's great. I mean, obviously the space is, is uh, important for us to have three courts that we can work on, but for us to be at the Golden Nugget, enjoying the restaurants that they have there, everybody's together, the camaraderie that goes along with that. So. 
yeah, it's good to get away from uh, looking forward to it. Steven, it felt like one of the recurring themes from yesterday was everybody kind of being on the same page about wanting to set the tone on the defensive side of the ball. For sure. How important is assistant coach Holland's going to be in kind of achieving that goal? He's going to be very important. We're working together on it. He's done it, been there, done that. And um, as a guy, when he steps into the room, he has the respect of the group. So, yeah, leading into that is important. But we spend a lot of time talking about what we want to do defensively, and he's going to be right at the head of it. Thank you. Right. No problem.